Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Hello. Nice to see you. Great. So it's 20 past 12. So I guess we are going to do a workshop about psychological safety. How are you all um, finding the conference so far? Anybody? Yeah, I'm liking it. I uh, uh -huh. just attended a couple of workshops uh, yesterday, but I'm pretty happy with them. Okay, great. Yeah, I uh, just had a talk as well a, few, a couple of hours ago. And I also listened to Evan Leborn speaking. I thought it was great. Um, we are on the same page when it comes to agile leadership there. Very important topic. So what I'm going to do um, now is that I'm going to start with a small presentation about psychological safety for those of you who have only heard the name but didn't really deep dive into the topic. I want to start by explaining it. And then we are going to play a game together. And we are going to do that in breakout rooms in teams of approximately five persons in each room. So presentation will take about, I think, 20 minutes and then we'll head on straight into the breakout rooms and we'll start to play the game. And you will get a link from me uh, uh, from where you will be able to, to play the game in rooms of five persons in each room. That will require that you show yourself and it will require that you unmute yourself so that you can play in a good way with the people uh, in the same room. Okay, so um, sharing my screen so that we can do the initial presentation first. And uh, psychological safety is the topic for today. Um, the first reflection that I would like to do is this one. Have you ever held back from sharing anything at work? It could be something you were working on, you know, a project you had, an idea you had. Maybe it was a complaint that you had because you were worried about how people might react to it. Well, certainly you probably have, because if you answer no to this question, you're either extremely um, hard to hurt, if you see what I mean, low on acceptance, or you're lying, because we have all been in this situation where we are not saying everything because we're a bit, you know, scared that, oh, maybe I will not get that promotion or maybe, you know, it would be misunderstood or maybe they think I'm stupid. So let me talk a little bit about why I see this happening. Um, a prerequisite for agile learning is really psychological safety. So I've been thinking a lot about this. What is the most important thing that could boost productivity and engagement, uh, as well as performance, innovation, and a great culture in an organization? And after having worked with a lot of large organizations as a consultant, as well as looking at research on uh, successful company cultures, I believe that I now absolutely know what the most important one thing is. And it's definitely not Scrum or Lean or Agile or Visualization or Kanban boards or Transparency or any other of the tools that we are uh, using. It's not even motivation. It's not even uh, servant leadership, but it's psychological safety. That's the plant form that everything else needs to rely on. But why is that? Why do I think so? Well, let us uh, look at a few examples here. Sometimes we don't speak up because everyone is sitting quietly, like in this case, in a classroom. Even if there is a question in there that needs to be answered. Most of the time, you know, we're too busy managing impressions and uh, we're not saying what we really have on our mind or asking that question. So uh, you think, ah, I'll figure it out later. I, I don't say that now because this person is uh, obviously uh, knows what he, is, he or she is talking about, this teacher um, on the picture. And sometimes we don't tell others about our ideas because we think that uh, I might be perceived in a negative way, you know, when in fact somebody is really looking for a new solution to solve the problem. 
but we don't tell about the new idea because we're afraid to look stupid or just being a pain, you know, this kind of thinking. And we're sometimes afraid to look incompetent in spite of our superior knowledge about a specific situation. And in this case, the nurse here uh, has a piece of information that the doctor is missing. So um, the nurse has direct contact with the patient and knows that the patient is not responding well to the dose of medicine that the doctor has prescribed. But uh, um, he or she is not saying that because she's, uh, last time the doctor said that he or she was incompetent. So uh, this, this nurse doesn't speak up in this situation either. And you know, the fact is that nobody wants to go to work and look stupid or incompetent. We all want to look smart and helpful, but we don't speak up. If there is a chance that we will be backstabbed or a chance that what we say will be misinterpreted. And this is really easy to manage. You don't ask any questions. You don't admit weaknesses or that you made a mistake. You don't offer ideas, new ideas, and you don't critique the status quo. This is unfortunate and instead we need to go first. We need to break that barrier. Uh, we must all be brave and then we can open up for others to do the same thing. Ask that question you need the answer to and then you open up for others. Tell people about your ideas. Psychological safety is a belief that no one will be punished or humiliated for speaking up with ideas or questions or concerns or making mistakes. And inform people about your observations. It could, in some cases, like in this case with the nurse and the doctor, save lives. Uh, because when the workplace feels challenging but not threatening, teams can sustain this broaden and build mode. And our levels of one hormone called oxytocin in our brains, it rises, it raises. Um, and, and this hormone is making us trust and engage in trust-making behavior with each other. Hmm? This is actually a very big factor in team success. Uh, and many others have, have also uh, come to this conclusion. Um, this is what, how we feel in the first stage uh, in, in a team development, like in the, in the norming phase. Um, so you wonder, can I trust these people? And, am I accepted as I am in this team? And you tiptoe around being polite to, to everybody. And then the team, of course, develops. You go through storming and forming and performing in the end. But it takes a lot of time to reach that stage. And if we all the time break up the project when we have come a bit on that path, then we are destroying the psychological safety. So that's also another reason why we should never work with projects anymore, or, or at least not short projects. In modern agile, we say make safety a prerequisite. Um, and this is a, a framework for us, as you might know, where we put um, the agile values on the, on the whole organization, not just on soft, software development and IT. And there is also Google's project, Aristotle. Uh, it's a third example. Uh, the most uh, important key dynamic of an effective team is by far psychological safety. They came to this conclusion after researching uh, this project for two years. They researched what makes a team high performing. Um, so this is really key to uh, creating a successful organization and a team. Uh, I have some definitions for you and people prefer different definitions. Uh, this is a short one. A team climate characterized by interpersonal trust and mutual respect in which people are comfortable being themselves. And then I have a second one. Uh, psychological safety refers to an individual's perception of the consequences of taking an interpersonal risk or a belief that the team is safe for risk taking in the face of being seen as ignorant, incompetent, negative or disruptive. So in a team with the highest psychological safety. Teammates feel safe to take risks around their team members. They feel confident that no one on the team will embarrass or punish anyone else for making a mistake, asking a question, or offering a new idea. And who came with this uh, theory is Amy Edmondson. Uh, I wanted actually to show you a short video from Amy because she was the one who coined this term. It was not 
Google. Some people think it was Google who coined the term, but it wasn't. It's actually um, Amy Edmondson who did that. So I would like to share this short clip with you uh, for you to see her talk about psychological safety. I think it's very powerful when she does that. So I'm just optimizing here, there, um, share. And let's go. There was research last year that was written up in the New York Times at Google saying that Google did a massive four-year study to find out what differentiated great teams from not so great teams. And bottom line, they found that the biggest differentiator by far of excellent teams at Google and not so good teams was psychological safety. And that was stunning news to me. I mean, it was, it was music to my ears, of course. But the reason why I think that's very important news for people in any organization is that I at least had a tendency to think of Google as full of unbelievably smart people, which I think is, is, is absolutely the case, but people who wouldn't necessarily have a problem sharing what they're thinking, that, you know, that there would be just uniformly a high level of confidence that I can say what I'm thinking. But it turns out, no, even at Google, it varied greatly from team to team and that made all the difference. We live more and more in a knowledge economy. That is, it is the knowledge, the ideas that people have, that people bring, that organizations bring, that really add value in the marketplace. So it stands to reason that we need to hear from people. And yet, the research, the data are overwhelming that many people feel they can't speak up at work. In many companies, it might be as many as half the employees are reporting that it really doesn't feel safe to speak up. That means we're losing enormous value. And so if we aren't hearing from people, we may be missing out on a game-changing idea you know, that could come in, become part of a new product or a new service. Or we might miss an early warning of a, of a threat in the market that someone saw but felt unable to bring the bad news to to their boss. It can be very powerful when a leader apologizes for not having made it safe in the past. When a leader takes responsibility and acknowledges, I can see that there were things that I did that made it difficult for you to come to me. Rather than, I think there's a spontaneous tendency to say, well, why didn't you come to me? Rather than stopping to think, I wonder what I did that made it difficult for you to come to me. Because I will assume that you are well-intentioned, right? I also assume that you're smart. So if, if it didn't work out, if there wasn't psychological safety there, it's on me. And I think it's always on the leader to go first and to, to, to do what he or she can to create psychological safety. The ability for people to come to work and speak up about what they know, what they don't know, what they see, uh, what they're worried about is absolutely mission critical to success in a knowledge economy. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this movie? Do you agree with Amy? How important is psychological safety really? Very important. And I also love that she said it's on the leader uh, to take the first step. That was, wow. That's powerful, isn't it? And the leader, yeah. need, how, how does the leader do that then? Um, uh, I, I'm, we're going to get back to uh, the presentation and, and look a little bit more on uh, what leaders can do here. So let's see, we are here. And yeah, so high performing team is when we help each other to succeed. Even, you know, sometimes uh, we don't feel 100% uh, uh, inspired to go to work. Maybe we're a bit sad, you know, something happened in the private life and, and it's easy to just call yourself sick. But if you know that when I get to work, I can be myself and I, I can tell my teammates about what happened and they will support me and they will help me to get things done. 
and then I will feel a bit better. You know, it's like I go to my peers, I go to my friends and we can work it out together. Uh, then we got a much better uh, way of thinking about uh, what, what is the purpose of an organization? What is the purpose of a team? And how can we create that place where we can really be ourselves? We are the good sides, we are the bad sides. Where can we talk about things that really matter and that everybody is, is actually thinking about and everybody has the same problems uh, when, when it comes down to it? So. In, in a team where you spend some time uh, talking about the private stuff, not always thinking that, yeah, we always have to be so efficient, we always have to talk about work, we always have to high perform. No, uh, we also need to be humans, we need to be people, and we can talk about private stuff because if we do that, we will paradoxically enough get a higher performing team. And this is what Amy Edmondson showed in her research. There is a connection between motivation, accountability, and performance, and high levels of psychological safety. So when we have high levels of both, we will be in this learning zone. Um, I mean, if, if we have low levels, on the other hand, on motivation and accountability, and high levels of psychological safety, then we feel very comfortable. We might, you know, enjoy work, but we are not uh, so much um, performing or contributing to the organizational goals. Uh, and you see also this anxiety zone down here. Uh, I always used to say that that's me after six months in a new company. When I come in as a consultant, I'm supposed to to give good advice, to change stuff, you know? Uh, but after six months, this is how you feel. You feel extremely low level of psychological safety because you, you realize that I can't change anything, but you're extremely motivated to, to, to do stuff for, for the company, but it's so difficult with all the limiting structures around the organization, so it's almost impossible. You need to start with finance and HR and change those limiting structures first. Uh, of course, the, the worst place to be is the apathy zone where we have low levels on both. Okay, so a manager who is trying to increase psychological safety, what should he or she do? Well, show vulnerability. That's the first step. Um, a, a leader needs to be vulnerable and the leader needs to say that, hey, I made a mistake. Let's learn from it. I'm not perfect. I don't have all the answers. Um, you know, what do you think? How, how can we solve this problem that we are facing? I make mistakes too. And we need everyone's brains here to, to solve this problem. Um, it's not like the, the manager is a perfect person uh, and, and knows all the answers. And if an, a manager have the courage to admit that, then you get a very high level of psychological safety where others also uh, can admit their mistakes and their shortcomings. So in a psychologically safe workplace, good performance is acknowledged, it's strengthened, and we can try and we can fail and it's okay. And in the end, we will learn. So we try again, you know, uh, we will learn in the end. What we don't want are these circles of psychological danger where we are afraid to admit mistakes. Then we start blaming other people and that will, uh, as a result lead to that we are not sharing different views with each other, then we keep quiet instead. And then we can fall victim of the common knowledge effect. And it's something that everybody knows. Uh, and then somebody comes and says, hey, I know that the, the world is not round, it's flat. You know what happened to that guy? They put him in jail uh, and, and they said he was crazy. So, um, it, it's about creating instead the positive circles where we are comfortable, we feel comfortable admitting mistakes, we learn from failure, and then we create a climate where people feel comfortable sharing different ideas and mistakes, and you know, we learn from mistakes instead of being afraid of admitting mistakes. And then we have also a much better innovation and decision-making climate. And guess what? Innovation and creativity is what we need for the future. Great, thank you for listening. And now we are playing the psychological safety game. 
How are you going to do it? Well, you're going to go to a breakout team. I'm going to put you in teams in a minute. And then you're going to go to agilepeople.com slash game. Psi safe game, it's spelled. And there is the game. Each person will pick a card um, that they have experienced or have a story about. And it could be a card that would increase or decrease psychological safety. So the cards have a, a red or a green guy on them, depending on if it would increase or decrease psychological safety, the statement on the card. And then you tell the story to the group and you discuss why you think this is important. I have a number of different ways of playing this game and you can also play it um, actually in a team that has been around for quite some time and then you play it in a different way. But now as we are um, quite new to each other, I would just recommend you to play in this very simple way where you just pick a card and you discuss uh, your different experiences from the card. So uh, I'm going to show uh, this side safe game. Um, I'll, I'll start by showing it and then I'm going to share the link with you also in the chat. Here we go. And there is, there is the link in the chat and I'm sharing also my screen so that you can see it on my screen. So it looks like this. Here are all the uh, cards. Uh, and if I point to a card, there will be a magnifying glass. Can you see that? So you pick a card. There are also some instructions that you can read here. If you would like to start by doing that, it's okay. So you read the instructions together, maybe in the team, the five people, and then you go here, you, you pick a card. There is also a function where you can randomly uh, pick a card. Uh, so it's down here, that random uh, thing. So let me put you now in rooms. If anybody has a question before I put you in rooms? I think it will be self-explanatory once you get in there and have a look at it. So you are 32 participants. Uh, I will put you in eight rooms that means or maybe nine even that means three to four participants per room or maybe four to five i feel a bit unsure now what do you think four to five or three to four do you want <laughs> do you want to be more or less? sorry four to five please four to five please four okay. to five yeah. yep four to five it is so i'm creating the breakout rooms you should get an invite for that uh, you can go in and you have the address there. Um, okay. I'm going to put in the chat again. I see that I might have put it to just one person here. There. There is the link in the chat. So I'll see you in uh, 30 minutes and we'll do a debrief. Okay. Have a good game. Um, open there.
Hi there, Paula. Hey, Paula. Hi. Do you want to go into a room? Hi, Paula. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you, Pia Maria. How are you today? I'm fine too. So we have some people coming in. Uh, do you want to play the game? Yes, sure. I'm I'm work I'm working in the conference and helping, but uh, I will I would like to join for your workshop. Okay. Uh, so, and I so, will try to be present until the end. Okay. So then I will put you in a breakout room. I will put you in Okay, okay. Um, I will put you in room number seven in that case. I'm assigning you to room number seven. Okay? Okay. See you. <laughs> See yeah. you. Bye.
Put in Quanza, so for, for now it's only us, I think. Yep. Let's wait a couple of minutes. Yeah. Hi there. Hello. So we didn't keep track of time, so we didn't know if it was time to come back. Clearly oh, okay. it wasn't. No, I I was thinking to play until a quarter past one. Ah, okay. But Pia, can, can we can we ask you because there was a, a, a one of the cards that we didn't understand. Maybe you can give us a, a help a hand yeah. there. Yeah. It was one that said something about uh, supportive organizational context. Mm -hmm. Supportive organizational context would increase psychological safety, right? What, what does that mean? Supportive organizational? Can you sh tell us in other? Yeah. So um, supporting uh, organization would provide the conditions. So you set people up to succeed, right? We are not mm -hmm. trying to put obstacles in place uh, for people to succeed. So that would be ah, uh, non-limiting non structures, for example, like no fixed budgets um, right. or annual budgets linked to fixed performance targets, uh, individually, uh, you know, bonuses, rewards linked to right. those performance targets, etc. Yeah. So an organization that will support your physical, uh, physiological, um, psychological safety. So like uh, open communication, uh, uh, flexible, mm -hmm. flexible environment. Uh, Definitely. Got it. Yes, got it. both both structural elements, but also cultural uh, elements. Yep. So it could be Understood. both. Um, okay. Thank so you. So living by the principles, uh, the agile principles and values. Not just Thanks. saying that, but also actually doing it. That's the important right. thing. Yeah. Okay. So, I don't know. Do you want to go back to some room or? Um, no, we, we're there? okay. We did, we did more. Oh, than, you were uh, room number six, right? Yeah. Yes. I don't know. At, at some point, the rooms changed, right? I was in yeah. four. And then <laughs> I did. Okay. You were only two in, in uh, room number four. So, I kind of put you in different rooms okay. so that you... You would have more people. I realized it was uh, uh, not everybody joined actually. Yeah. So that's why I did that. Yeah, and also Liliana had to leave in our in our group, so we we just decided to. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Great. So we'll do a short debrief, I guess, um, in uh, five six minutes. Okay. Thanks. We we'll see. Has somebody else coming in now? Hi, Elaine.
Hello, welcome back. Hi. Hi. A good, um, good discussion. Yeah, great. So let's call back everybody. I'm going to close all the rooms. It's a quarter past, so. They got 60 seconds to leave their rooms now. And they should be back. So did you have any questions about any of the cards or otherwise? Hello again, everybody. Everybody's coming back. And we got 20 more seconds and then everybody will be back in the main room. So we'll just wait. Hope you had a nice experience discussing psychological safety. So now everybody should be forced back into the main room again. Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Welcome back. Do you have a good Hello. Discussion? Yes. 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 You want to tell us about it? Let's start with um let's start with room number one. Andre, Luis, Miguel, Mia. What did you talk about? What was your experience from the exercise? Okay, I can start, but I will request the support from the team if I if I miss something. Okay, <laughs> in overall, uh, we we talk about the misleading of communication, uh, the freedom of misunderstanding, and the freedom of failure. Um, we talk a bit the common points that touch between themselves. Um, several experience, uh, how the teams interact with each other, how that topic was was engaged and why they appeared. Uh, but, but mainly, I think that independently of the situation, having the freedom of failure gives also the ability to have a better communication. Yes. And, and, also, uh, <laughs> and also how we can leverage better the communication so that we have clear understanding of what we want to deliver as the best value possible is also a quite ultimate challenge. So this was the overall picture. Yeah. And, and what can HR and leaders do to, to help here to make it safe to fail? No. Uh, it's, it's a good question. Avoiding micromanagement and top level decisions without having the squads enabling those those decisions mm. it's very important because at the end if the leaders would like to have very deliver values in the most faster way they need to give the freedom to the to the teams or to the squads how they can deliver better and the fastest way and they need to rely on the people and on their skills and experience how to achieve that they need to be heard Definitely. Thank you, Miguel, for sharing that. That's very strong. Thank you. Anybody else from Team One who wants to compliment Miguel's talk here? Andre, Luis, Mia. No? That was I think Miguel did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. There is nothing left to say for team number one. <laughs> what about number two, breakout room two? It's Elaine, Esther, Hugo, and Yvonne. What did you talk about? Yvonne, I already talked too much. So the stage is yours. Mm. 
So at the beginning, we talked about failure within team and opening up to your team leaders um, about your, yeah, yeah, about failing or making mistakes. And we also discovered um, that it's, it might be even, um, yeah, a culture thing to admit um, failures to, so we discovered there are two options, either the culture in the organization and then the culture uh, within the country. So we also um, noticed that we come from different uh, cult um, countries and um, we've worked in different organizations. And um, yeah, we shared some examples um, of, of how, how it was for us um, in the past. And um, for me personally interesting was Hugo's story um, about how he experienced like um, the behavior in the Netherlands. Um, he said um, there he found leaders to be quite open about failure um, in this country. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's um, as we say in Sweden, high in the roof, we say. <laughs> I don't know if you have a similar expression in the Netherlands, but it's the same in Sweden. The, the Dutch um, cult, culture and the Swedish culture are quite similar, actually, from that perspective. Uh, we also are quite honest, uh, trusting, maybe a bit naive sometimes even. Um, we call it blue-eyed. <laughs> we are blue-eyed. Easy to, to trick and fool because we trust everybody. Uh, and we even trust our own government and, um, you know, the epidemiologists uh, as well. So <laughs> we do as we are told in Sweden, uh, we keep distance. And it's easy to keep distance in Sweden because, you know, there is a lot of space. And we don't touch each other that much normally. You know, we don't kiss or do stuff like that. We just say hi, you know, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, I wasn't going to talk about COVID here, but I, um, I, I, I was doing this parallel to, to agile leadership and the way that uh, the culture works in, in uh, Sweden. And so I think we have a, a high uh, general in the world level of psychological safety in, in our country. Uh, but that has to do with many things. Just like you say, it's different. I mean, different countries. What is your history? What have you been through? Um, a lot of influences from, from everywhere. And um, yeah, it, it's been, it's different. Uh, and sometimes a very strong company culture can break through even the country culture I have seen in, in, in different companies that wherever you go in a Swedish company, it's a Swedish culture in some Swedish companies. So you go to India, to, to this company, it's the same feeling as if you go into an office in, in, in Stockholm, same in Ikea. If you go into an Ikea store somewhere in the world, it's the same feeling as if you go in, but it, it's the same kind of culture, the same kind of feeling. Uh, people are uh, Swedish, uh, acting in Swedish ways. But um, yeah, um, maybe we should go to room number two, um, and we did actually. So now it's room number three. Carla, Joanna, and Pedro. What did you talk about? I'm very curious to hear. Uh, we talk about support, the the import the importance of the leadership support to the um, psychology safety. Uh, and the autonomy uh, in uh, teams. Um, um, for, for this, uh, sometimes the, the leaders um, don't give the support needs to the teams uh, feels uh, confident and uh, uh, secure with the uh, uh, the ideas so uh, with this support uh, is difficult to to have uh, um, uh, to improve uh, the process <clears throat> to improve the process to um, and to connect uh, with others um, we are always uh, from uh, uh, banking companies 
companies with a, a strong structure uh, and uh, with a structure more um, um, let me see I'll tell you more conserve conserve um, conservative not so conservative <laughs> not so agile thank you so <laughs> Uh, and uh, we uh, and sometimes in, in this kind of companies uh, we don't feel this support from the the leaders. Mm. Now, so so this this is an interesting topic topic structure. Too much structure would not be good, but too little structure would also not create safety, right? So it's just enough. <laughs> and that's a different balance that you need to find because if you have no structure whatsoever many people will feel insecure and and they would feel a low level of psychological safety as well it's also very personal how much structure how much structure do i need as a person it's different for different people you need different level of, of structure to feel psychologically safe some people need more structure and order and some people need less and that's just the way we uh, are. Uh, but, but in the, our uh, Portuguese yeah. mentality, um, nobody wants to fail. And our uh, hierarchical, uh, hierarchical, is, hierarchical, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the top management and middle managers never fail. It's always the teams uh, oh, with uh, the yeah. owners of, of so failing. That's immature leadership. Yeah. I would call that immature leadership because yes. they have not understood what leaders should be. And, and uh, <coughs> we have uh, our Joanna, Carla, and me. We work in companies very similar, mm. uh, and uh, it's we we are trying to to transfer, transform to to a more agile approach but it's very difficult and it will be a long process uh, yeah to to the companies uh, understand that, that they need to change yeah okay. it's very difficult to drive the the, um, the change from bottom up when you have that kind of yeah. in place in an organization and middle man management is always kind of squeezed between uh, you know top top management's uh, x uh, uh, behavior and x expectations and then you have the bottom teams y needs that they are pushing up so middle management get gets crushed yes. in the middle don't know what to do um, it's not easy to be a middle manager in in such an organization so, um, what what you can do is to um, I mean most top management teams say that they want to increase business agility right but I don't yes. think they realize what that means um, it means giving back the power to the people right it means to to empower everybody and give everybody information and knowledge so that everybody can make the decisions where they are when the decision is needed. And they don't want to give away their power, they don't want to give yes. away their status, their position, their salaries, etc. So they are every, what, every what work in Portugal. You know, what is going to happen to me and my role when we go agile, if we transform, what will happen to me? They are really scared. And this is a fear that you can't ignore. Um, and, and you can't really, you know, just, that, that's why many organizations will, will go down and go under before they change. Uh, so, uh, and that's not a destiny that, then, then you need to jump before that happens, jump somewhere else to an organization that is more flexible or flatter in, in the hierarchy or something like that. But everybody ultimately has to make their own decision, right? Do I stay here and fight? Uh, do I think there is a chance to change something in this organization or do I jump to, to somewhere where I can really make use of myself and my competence uh, around agile and around agility? So uh, that's ultimately a personal decision. Um, might be difficult to, to, to find a, a job also in these times, right? So you stick around and, and you try to do your best to, to push up um, 
and, and with little success most of the time. That's what I see all the time in all organizations. Okay. Thank you for sharing uh, room three. Uh, room four is empty. So we have room five with Mario and Jana Sanchenko. Where are you? Okay. Yeah, we are. Yeah, I see you. Hi, Mario. <laughs> Uh, I will quickly say uh, about uh, Virginia. She had to leave, but uh, she was uh, she gave a very interesting um, example uh, that we discussed about psychological safety. And psychological safety uh, sounds like something that we can do when uh, when everything goes kind of well. We can support. We can accept different people. We can accept their different personalities. But what when times go bad? For example, she has to fire someone. Mm -hmm. And how to create psychological safety in such a tough event as firing process yes. and tough conversation? So uh, we touched a bit on that, and uh, that's where I'm still. Um, yeah, there, there was this Dutch company, uh, I, I'm running an agile a leadership course, and, and this guy came from this Dutch company as a guest speaker, and they had actually, um, uh, a, a, all the, the, um, the employees decided who should go, because they realized that, wow, in the next couple of months, our income will go down, and the only uh, possible solution to this is to fire some people, right? So they have this problem. We are going to have to fire some people. How do we do this? So the first thing that they did, this, this team of uh, employees who realized that this was the case, was to tell the manager or the owner of the company to go out. You need to leave because you cannot be involved in this decision. We have to make this decision ourselves. So they started to discuss how are we going to make the decision. And uh, they discussed and then they say, okay, can, we, can, can this person go? No, no, they, that person cannot go because it has too many customer contacts that we need. Can that person go? Can I go? You know, so in the end, it turned out that the people who actually left in the end, they were seen as heroes who helped to save the organization. And, all of, uh, and they helped all of these to get new job in other places. So everybody in the staff, help them to find a new job. And some were rehired after uh, three or four months to this organization again. So it was a very different approach to firing people that I think is quite inspirational as well. You see them as heroes. You go now, but we will take you back as soon as we can. You know, this kind of feeling that yes, uh, I, I can go, you know, but some, some who offered to go themselves, the others said, no, you can't go, you're crazy, then we will lose all these customers, you can't go. So they were kind of agreeing in a number of different conversations together, who could go and who couldn't go. Uh, and then the people who, who they saw, yeah, I, I can definitely go because right now I'm not bringing in any income, I don't have important customer relations. So yeah, I could do it. Uh, do you know the name of that company? Sorry, the name of it. I forgot, I think. Um, okay. Sorry about that. Um, I think they wrote, the Corporate Rebels wrote an article about it. I will try okay. to find it. Um, but Thank you. yeah. So look at the articles that the Corporate Rebels wrote. You know this company, Corporate Rebels? They write a lot of blogs online. Yeah. So you can have a look at those. Thank you. Um, very inspiring story, I think. That's the first time I hear that uh, uh, a firing decision was made by the staff themselves. And they didn't want the managers to be involved in that decision because they said, no, it's not going to end, uh, end well if, if you are involved in that. Okay, uh, we have Louise, you're alone in breakout room six. Uh, maybe we take seven then. Fernando, Mariana, and Paula. What did you talk about in your room? I think Nuno was also with us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sure some, some this, oh, sorry, go ahead, Mar Mari. <laughs> uh, I was just gonna say that we played like the random cards. So we got several different cards. Um, we had, I can 
uh, just outline uh, the cards and then Fernando can talk about it. Uh, we talked about public punishment, micromanage versus decision-making to the team, freedom to be angry, making choices without comparing yourself to others, sarcasm, and listen first. Go Great. ahead, Fernando. Uh, my main highlights was about micromanaging. Uh, personally, for me, it's, it's difficult how to, how to balance between micromanaging and coaching. So obvious for, for good reasons, it's always good when you go to the team and ask questions and let them know how to solve the problem, right? Otherwise, if you go to the team just saying how to do it, it's like nobody's getting better for this situation. Uh, well, I think that this is, this is the, the main point is to create empathy with the team saying, team, I'm here to help. Sometimes I will try to speak by my experience, how I would solve this, but most of the time I would try to ask uh, uh, questions, right? So how to get together and understand different point of views and making sure that we are not trying to micromanaging, saying people how to do it is the terrible thing to do. Mm. Uh, yeah, for me, is the, 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 the challenge here is the balance between how to solve the problem and how to help my team solve the problem so that they can learn, they can get better, and they will learn. And for the next time, they will probably solve in a much better way. <laughs> Yeah. Very good. Yeah, so, so the coaching role is, is one role for the Agile coach, right? And then you have the mentor role, you have the trainer role, you have the facilitator role, depending on the need of the team. You can go in and out of these different roles depending on the need of the team. So um, they, they, very, very good um, tool is to, to ask questions and, and to not too much leading questions, but what would happen if you do this, you know? Absolutely. Uh, and then what would be the consequence and how, how can that uh, help you uh, solve this and, you know, mm -hmm. make them think themselves and, uh, or go and ask these questions to your team, uh, team members, right? So yeah. uh, it takes a little bit more time in the beginning for management, not saying the answer because sometimes the manager knows a good answer, but maybe it's not the best answer, uh, right? So, uh, and, and to, to make people start thinking for themselves instead is, is always a better alternative. Although it might take a little longer, but it's well invested time, I think, to do that. Yeah. And, and Mari, Mari, Mari pointed out something that sometimes the team needs support and help and suggestion and guidelines. So how to balance, right? This yeah. is the, the point. That's the yeah. trick. Definitely. Yeah. And, and the, the next takeaway that I've got was like uh, freedom to be angry. Mm. By the end of the day, we are all humans, right? You have the right to be angry, angry about something. I think that oh, we discussed it, that it's basically how, in, how positive or negative is the discussion, right? by the end of the sprint, if something changed, you can be really frustrated about the results. So we work it hard during all the sprint and everything changed. Wow, I work it for nothing, right? Mm -hmm. So you have the right to be angry, but it all depends on purpose, outcome delegation, strategy, basically what uh, even just said, previously in the morning right so how can we create empathy explain our team what happened to change what causes this frustration what can we work or how can we work to avoid this frustration next time maybe it's communication maybe it's a misalignment yeah. maybe it's purpose right so it's, it's not only angry being angry being angry everybody has the right to to, to, to be we are yeah. humans, so. And, and conflict is not necessarily negative, right? So conflict no. can be constructive up to a point, uh, right? Because artificial harmony is a much worse place to be in 
than uh, uh, constructive conflict. And then if you balance it over on the bad side, then it becomes personal attacks and that we want to avoid, right? So as long as Absolutely. we don't personally attack people, we have this balance between a healthy conflict and, and artificial harmony. Uh, so uh, that's where we want to be, uh, right uh, in that point in the middle so that we don't, um, we don't move over that point so that it becomes negative. But if we do, we know that we can go back because we are a, a team who learn all the time, right? Absolutely. So the totally problem agree. here is that it's also personal. How much conflict do I like to have in my life? It's also cultural. In some mm -hmm. cultures, you, you engage in, you know, uh, discussions and, and you, you, woo you, you show your emotions a lot. We don't do that here. In, in the north, uh, we are very much, you know, toned down, a little bit shy. Don't raise your voice. It's seen as very, <laughs> uh, very bad to raise your voice even. So it's a lot of artificial harmony up here. Uh, and we would be happy if we could have some more of, of, of the southern temperament, really. Interesting, interesting, yeah. So which also leads to the next uh, card, which is was making choices without comparing yourself to others. We said, we cannot please everyone. So bring your idea, bring your thoughts up behind it and let's discuss it. It's not gonna be bad. Mm. And not judging people or because they had an idea. Because we can all have stupid ideas, right? And we might, might may not realize it right away. And then when we think about it, Oh, it wasn't that smart, was it? No, but now we learn that it wasn't. So let's move on, and we don't make fun of each other or kind of behave badly because of that. But we just encourage different ideas because it may lead to to better things and innovative and creative culture where people express themselves and are not afraid to express stupid things. So it's really a very good thing. Um, definitely. Thank you for sharing. Cool. Awesome discussions. Thank you for that. Yeah, uh, definitely. Any other uh, opinions, comments, questions, or? Uh, Pia Maria, I think we have a question from Ugo in the chat, if you ah, want to take a look. Yeah, just, let's see. Just a comment. Portugal has one of the highest G-I-N-E numbers in Europe <clears throat> and servant leadership doesn't translate to any Portuguese expression and explaining it leads to very interesting faces. Ah, that's Hugo who said that. Are, are you still here, Hugo? Hugo? Yes, uh, I'm here. Oh, there you are. Yes. Hi. Can, can you uh, repeat what you mean? So in Portugal, if you come from other countries, it's very hard to reach leadership. They're kind of closed. They're up there. Uh, even if the Gini uh, ratio, Gini coefficient is about income here, leadership is unreachable or hard to reach. Even if they say the door is open, that they're always there for us, etc. Uh, you'll see it in the communication systems of the companies. Hmm. For example, emails for boardroom members or uh, top directors, they are hidden, for example. Um, these type of things. Yeah. Um, if you try to explain what servant leadership is here in Portugal, uh, the concept doesn't fly. So not only we don't have the words, but explaining that the leader is successful if his team is successful is something that doesn't match the, the, the reality or the concepts that people have on their daily lives. Yeah. So we get a lot of, eh, what? What do you mean by that? <laughs> uh, so that's what I meant by the, the, the funny faces. Yeah, so awareness and training is what's needed. I'm, I'm actually going to, to run an agile leadership training um, the, the first and second of October this week and the next week as well uh, as part of this conference. So send your managers there <laughs> because 
you know, there are uh, probably even in Portugal uh, organizations that are small and fast and very agile and where they have an agile leadership. And these organizations will take market share from the old dinosaurs. And that's something you can tell your managers as well, that uh, it's, not, uh, it's not a strategy for the future to hold on to the old traditional uh, way of working. Uh, they have to, they will have no choice if they want to be um, competitive in the future, but to always learn, to always uh, move forward and be a learning organization to, to create, um, to, to really use the power of every team member and every employee um, to, to realize the, the potential of the organization because a non-learning organization will fail in the future of work. So um, new ways of working is coming. Uh, you can be sure it just takes a little longer in, in some countries with more difficult cultures, leadership cultures, but uh, it will definitely uh, change the game because it's a global world today. We're living and, and competing with everybody else uh, in the whole world uh, and we see that with covid and we see that with competition everywhere so yeah i think um we have about five minutes four minutes left yes so four any minutes. final any final words or maybe you want to give just one statement or expression uh for for this um for the exercise for the game please bring it back with you uh, to your companies to your organizations and play it with your teams it's free it's online you just use it as much as you want with your teams and i can uh, tell you that it's really powerful if you if you make it a part of of uh, the retrospective after each sprint you can play the game and you can talk about what did we talk about in the last sprint? Did we do something about that in this sprint? You know, follow up on that for every sprint you do in the retrospective and pick maybe three cards every uh, retrospective that you say, we're going to work on these for the next sprint. Because just starting to talk about these things will make a difference on the level of psychological safety in your organizations. So maybe just one last word from, from each of you. Um, and uh, okay, I'll, I will appoint the first person who say one word, and then you can go on. So I will appoint Miguel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm very grateful, uh, Pia, for this sharing. Um, I will use for sure your game in my in my in my squad to to listen more what people have to say, and I will try to share more about about this uh, psychological effect of uh, of uh, sharing the pains of teammates okay because i really i really believe that uh, having an opening conversation leads to much more value than suppose thank you so you appoint the next person miguel okay i will i will point for example fernand eric by the way, Fernando, you are from Brazil, right? Yes, but living in London, opening a development center in Lisbon. Uh, I'm feeling safe to use this to, to create psychological safety. That was the purpose. Who do you <laughs> <laughs> Are you sending on to somebody else? Uh, let me look at this. Uh, Luis Teixeira. Okay, so I can say about this session knowledge. Uh, so it was a very powerful knowledge to acquire. And I will use the cards uh, more as an icebreaker, probably for the retros. Uh, a few of them, at least, to try to break the ice on some subjects that usually don't come up. So that's more it. Great. So thank you. Who do you pass on to? Uh, Yvonne, you want to take it? Yes, thanks. Um, I'm super, super grateful. Thank you very much, um, Pierre Maria. 
And I will definitely take the video with me from Amy Edmondson because I find it's such a hard, I've, I've learned, tried to learn so much about the topic myself as well, but it's really hard. And she's gone. Okay. <laughs> so maybe we I don't have to explain. I also oh. loved how you Oh, she's maybe coming back. Uh, thank you, Yvonne. <laughs> thank you. I'll take um, Paula. Oh, thank you. So everything that is related to human lead leaders or not, but uh, that talks about perception, listening, psychological safety is so much important since we spend eight hours at least in our job so everything that helps us to be better humans and to improve our relations between our co-workers is welcome and i think pia maria is great talking about all these subjects and they've contributed a lot for the human uh, in this planet with this knowledge uh, so thank you pia thank you so much Thank you, Paula. And uh, I think that's the end of it. We were supposed to end 10 before 2, and that's actually exactly what the time is right now. So thank you very much for joining me in this game. It was really nice to, to get to know some people that I haven't seen before in Portugal and, and the different places. And I wish you good luck with psychological safety for the future. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.